Hey guys, Blamanger here, and we're back with more Trials of Mana. Now, before I get too deep into things, I'm gonna go ahead and buy Kevin's weapon before I forget. So let's do that real quick. It's a nice increase to attack. And we'll go ahead and equip it. Now, last time, you may have remembered that these uh, cat dudes mentioned the city of Peta having the best equipment around. And I may have sounded a little surprised about that when they said that. There's a reason for it. And I'm going to show you what that reason is right now. And I pressed the wrong button to get into the menu for like the billionth time. So Peta is actually really easy to find. It's got a nice big marker on the map for it. So it was west of Buka Volcano. It's actually more like southwest. But anyway, it's right over here next to the Mirage Palace. This right here is... Let me go over it that Well... I'm pretty sure it tells you. Weird. I could have sworn that it pops up on there telling you that it was the ancient city Peta. Ah, there we go. Ancient capital Peta. You just land here and you're like, what the heck? This isn't a capital, this is the woods. Or the jungle, I should say. But you go down and around here and that'll lead you into Peta. Or it would be, except, uh, you know, all we've got is this. Now, the way you get to Pet is you go through here. And this is how you know you did not go to Pet. And there's a reason for it. Talk to this guy, the ancient capital of Peta, but it was destroyed in the war against the Dragon Lord ten years ago. I heard they sold high quality equipment there. Scholars say that mana can distort time and space. This place was connected to the past, but when the mana stones disappeared, it vanished too. How can we find it? If the Benevidons caused a time and space distortion, we might be able to get there after defeating some of them. Well, I'm gonna spoil things for you. Five of them is not enough to be able to go into bed. Not even six of them, because I already did a practice run. I think you can probably get there for seven, but don't worry. I will let you guys know at the earliest available opportunity to get into PETA, to where you can get the best equipment that money can buy. I mean, it's not really at the top of my to-do list right now anyways, because I clearly don't have enough money for it, because I still haven't bought Hawkeye's weapon from the cat people. Anyway, the next location we're going to is right here, the Woods of Wandara, where the Wood Benevidon is. And I forgot its name. I think it's Miss Palm. Anyway. Here's the uh, merchants again, so we're not going to be able to buy our uh, weapon for Hawkeye until afterward, unfortunately, because we don't have enough money. Even if I sold Kevin's old weapon, it wouldn't give me enough money. Anyway, this area is a lot nicer than the Chart Moon Tower. A lot nicer. Uh, but it's still pretty deadly. If you find yourself getting wombo comboed by the enemies, then uh, you're gonna take some heavy damage. And it's a fairly short dungeon too, although there are a lot of these little dead ends here. It's uh, mainly populated by these uh, mushglooms and chobin hoodlums. And 
and uh, honestly, they're, they're not too bad to fight. Uh, you'll also see some of these, uh, I forget what they're called, Quineeb, right, and these caterpillars, Tremorkins. I think the Tremorkins are a little more dangerous than the Quineebs, but honestly, in my experience, all the Quineebs will do is cast Strength immediately, as soon as they... Uh, shoot, I wanted that. As soon as they come on screen, and I have not let them live long enough to do anything else, so I couldn't tell you what else they do. Chobin hoodlums are a little bit of a problem because they like to throw projectiles that deal heavy damage. Like a couple hundred damage. And as you can see, Hawkeye is taking a beating. As usual. And over here we have on the oh, it's I was saying Chubb and Hoodlum, right? I don't know. Chubb and Hoodlum. Wow, I'm already about to die again. Jeez, what is up with Hawkeye's defense? It is terrible. Once again, we really do want to get to level 38 soon now. Like, pretty soon. So we definitely want to fight as much as we can. And sometimes, for whatever reason, not all enemies on the screen will spawn the first time you get there. It's really bizarre. I'm starting to get to the point where stats are like hard capped for my current class. So I guess, um, I guess we'll race Spirit for Kevin. Pretty sure I raced Spirit on the last level too. Dream Raid, ah, that'll be handy. That is assuming that it doesn't become nighttime before I, uh, get back to the boss. Stamina. Can't raise intellect. I really don't know what to raise. Maybe spirit? I guess? We definitely don't want to waste any levels without class changing as soon as we get to 38. And we're close. We'll definitely be 35 all around by the time we leave this dungeon. Treasure chests are just a coming. Enjoy the uh, trek through this more colorful than we're used to area. Especially after the Chartman Tower, that was pretty gloomy looking. As much as I love the forest outside of the Chartman Tower, the Chartman Tower itself is rather dull. Such a stark contrast to the area that Luna is in in Secret of Mana. Probably the most interesting locale in that game. Um, I guess I'm going to go with Stamina this level, since Hawkeye is taking tons of damage. I'm not going to make it a point to try to go down every single pathway <laughs> like I have been, because I think I have illustrated quite well at this point that there are no rewards down the wrong path in this game. Just aren't any. 
And I did do a practice run, but, uh, my memory's bad. And the path is a little bit winding, so... I'm gonna hit some of the dead ends anyway. Okay, at least I skipped over one of them, right? I believe I actually made it this far in in the practice run before I saw these enemies for the first time. Unfortunately not. I might end up having to do a grinding session after the next episode. Because I really want to be level 38 before I go into the final Benevidon's uh, or dungeon, I guess. I'm gonna be honest here. My memory of the end game of Trials of Mana is basically non existent. Like, areas like this and basically all the whole rest of the game that we've been to have been stuff that uh, very prominently stood out in my mind over the years. And you may be wondering, like, this area just seems like a generic forest area. And yeah, sure, but it's also unlike any other forest area in the game. Like the way it's got the uh, the dirt paths and all the all the grass and the sunlight shining through the canopy. It's just, it's I don't know, it just kind of stands out in my mind. And, uh... Yeah, it looks like we are... ready to go in. Probably should have made it nighttime, but, um... So! For the strategy... Definitely want to get that pressure pointer on Kevin immediately, and... You may notice we do not have any Luna abilities. Same problem we had at Chart Moon Tower. Fortunately, this guy is kind of a chump, even this late in. So just uh, just use Dark Force. It's the strongest ability we got. And I'm just gonna melee with Hawkeye and Kevin. And lather, rinse, repeat. Eventually, this guy will go down. Just stay up on top of your heels. Uh, he does have a couple of screen nukes at his disposal, in which case I would use Angela with a uh, Poto Oil to heal up from that. Other than that, it would be pretty straightforward of a fight here. Ability spam is going to be annoying. I'm not really too worried about the status effects, it's just gonna be stuff like poison, which I can just cure the damage from. It's not really a strong poison. Uh, I believe I said in the last episode that while I believe Dolan and Lightgazer are the strongest Benevidons in the game. Uh, Ms. Palm is one of the two weakest Benevidons, at least in my opinion. Um, most people say the Wind Benevidon is the weakest. I actually think Ms. Palm is weaker. I think Ms. Palm is the weakest. But, uh, you know, that's just me. And maybe the 
the point of contention that makes the difference between the two is that I have never fought Ms. Palmas the seventh Benevidon, and I have fought the Gwyn Benevidon as the seventh one. Now he is going to town on Hawkeye here. Probably not going to spam magic as much as I have been. Just because I actually can hit this guy for decent damage with my melee attacks. Plus he keeps doing that ability there, which I think actually reduces magic damage. Kind of an interesting design here. Um, not very intimidating like other Benevidons are in their design. Like, to me, he just looks like a pumpkin with two Tropicalos for arms. Tropicalo being like the first boss in Secret of Mana. Well, first real boss, anyway. Definitely time to bust out the portal roll. Let's bust out another pressure point in case it wore off. One complaint I do have with this game is it's you basically just have to look at the damage numbers to know when your buffs wear off. So this guy will sometimes poison. I see him using sleep more often. Sleep's nothing to worry about at all. Once you get hit, you wake up from it. So. It's definitely been worse in other mana games, for sure. This guy kind of actually reminds me of a boss, uh, mini boss, I should say, in the uh, Shade Man stage in Mega Man 7. Same kind of expressive pumpkin. Mm, I guess I don't really need to use a proto oil. Just kill a Hawkeye and it should be fine. Almost seems like it's a counter attack. This fight's a little bit deceptive because it does look like there's multiple targets to attack, but it's all. Oh, just one target, Miss Bomb. It would be nice if we could take out the Tropicalo tentacles. I 
should almost be dead at this point. I didn't even come close to running out of MP with Angel in my practice run. If that tells you anything. I think I have been casting more in this run, though. Just because she's basically just dead weight if you're not casting spells with her. Unfortunately. I'm not going to use a fairy walnut on her, though. If she runs out of MP, so be it. If we could spam screen loops, it might be dangerous at this point, but like, that attack is so rare. He's almost dead, and that's only the second time we've seen it. Plus the fact that probably his most dangerous ability is the sleep ability, but it gets cancelled out by anything else. I don't know, this, this guy is a joke. Total joke. Okay, Kevin definitely needs to kill it now. I oh, we need to heal up twice, actually. Yeah. Then maybe I'll do pressure pointer again, just in case it will. Alright, now Angela is out of MP, so... A lot less spell spam going on. But he's probably gonna die any hit now, I really expect it. Angel can still use the photo oils for us though. Here's the downside of not spamming my spells. It seems like he's getting more attacks in now that I'm not. There we go. Told you he was almost dead. He won! Two left. We're nearly there. So, first things first, I'm gonna restock my items, which I think I only used a couple of photo oils. I may have over prepared with photo oils for the entire rest of the game. It's fine, it's fine, it's a really good item. Alright, so these cats have the same equipment that they had before. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy the Taishaku for Hawkeye. Should be the last thing I buy until PETA, where I buy the best equipment that money can buy. I think. I've been saying that in this episode, but 
Like I said, my memory of the end game of Trials of Mana is non-existent. Yeah, this is looking like a short episode, so I guess I will show off one more thing and probably grind it out in between episodes. And to do this thing, I need to go to an inn. Probably a better town to do this in, but uh, I guess I needed to rest anyway. You don't need to rest to do this, you can just say no and save the game. But uh, if you remember those question mark, question mark, question mark seeds, we need those to get certain items to change our classes with. However, I think it will only give items that the characters in your party can actually use. I might be wrong on that, but that's still six items that you could randomly get and you can get duplicates from each seed. So the idea here is you use that. Okay, I got a rune book that time. Now, what happens if I try to reset it because I wanted a different item? So let's try it again. room book again. What the heck? You can't save Scummit? Well, you can, but there's a trick to it. Okay, after a little bit of trial and error, I have figured out what exactly determines what the seeds drop. And it is your experience point total. So, I was right at first. If you don't like what you get, go out and kill some enemies. But I had I had it a little bit wrong. You wanna save after you kill some enemies. And then you plant the seed. And if you don't get what you want, you reset, go out, kill some enemies, go back, save, and try again. To rest and you can just save the game. And I still got a room book, so I'm gonna do this a few times and then I'll just cut ahead to when I get something different. Didn't even have to cut ahead. 
that was what did it. All right, so I don't actually know without doing more research which items I want, but I think off camera I'm just gonna repeat that process until I get the items I want, and then I'll show you said items once we come back. But that's gonna be it for now. Thank you guys for watching. And tomorrow we will come back and take on the last Benevidon that we can currently reach, which is the Wind Benevidon. So, uh, make sure you leave me a, a sub if you, uh, haven't already subscribed to the channel, and smash that like button. See you guys later.